Before we get started, I want you guys to take a moment to look through your eye drawing packet. Notice that this tutorial is going to be slightly different from this tutorial, and everybody approaches drawing things differently, but I'm going to um, show you the way that I would do it, um, but use this as a reference as you go. So the first step is going to be to look in the mirror and look at the shape of your eye. So um, everybody's eye shape is going to be slightly different and that's what we want to mimic. We want to draw your eye. Um, so to get started, you're going to be in a fresh page on your sketchbook. And before we even look at the shape of our eye, let's map in the placement of where we're going to put it. So here's an unfinished sample. Um, that I've done and you can see that my eye is slightly below the halfway mark on the paper so what I want you guys to do is we need enough room for our eyebrows this one was done a little too high up on the page so if you guys if you look at the halfway mark on your paper let's say it's here and you shift down like a full inch that's where I want you to place your eye so everybody again go about an inch below halfway and put your fingers there on the edge and at two fingers of a space you're gonna draw a dot just like that so again you're about two fingers below halfway and two fingers in so an inch down and an inch over and then we're gonna do the exact same mark so we're an inch below halfway but this time we're gonna be three inches from the outside of the paper with our dot, so you can see again, I'm three inches from the outside of the paper, and that's gonna mark the size of our eye. So my dots on this one would be here and here, um, which is, gives us enough space for the eyelashes and enough space for the eyebrows, yet it covers most of the paper. So now is the time where you look in the mirror and you start to identify what your eye shape looks like. So take a moment to do so, and then, you're gonna sketch in the outside shape of your eye completely. So look at that, um, your uh, tear duct, and you're gonna notice that your tear duct has this kind of rounded shape. Now, before you get started um, in drawing your tear duct, I just wanna point out that eyes do not look like this. It's not a football where it's pointy on both sides. Um, you have to give yourself that rounded tear duct. So um, I have that rounded tear duct here, and then I'm going to start. And as I look at my eye, I do this really slowly because I really want to make sure I get an accurate version of what my eye looks like. And the shape is very important. And if you struggle with this shape of the eye, um, let me know. I'm happy to help you. Uh, because if you don't get this part right, the rest just doesn't quite turn out. So the bottom of my eye is gonna have a slight curve like that. The top of my, and notice my lines aren't perfect, I'm just lightly sketching with my 2H pencil. And that's gonna be the shape of my eye. Now from here, we're gonna start to look at how the thickness of your eyelid and um, how all those other lines that you have to draw are gonna come into play. So like right here, we have some eyelid thickness. So that's where you're gonna draw this lip of the eyelid where the white of your eye touches it. And anytime if you need to stop, refine, clean, erase, go for it.
And I've also drawn just this little um, curve right here to place the location of the tear duct. So you want to make sure that you get that information in there. You can um, add a you know an extra circle of detail if you want, but that can always come later. So this next step I think is one of the harder steps. So we need to draw a perfect circle to locate your um, your iris of your eye, and that needs to uh, be. It can't be uh, like this, guys, like an oval, because if it's oval shaped at all, it's going to look kind of like a demon eye. So you want to make sure that it is perfect. Now notice like on this one, my eyelid it kind of um, hangs down and covers part of the iris. So look in your eye, see how open your eyelid is. And that's how you will draw your iris. So I'm going to do my best to have my iris just almost touch the bottom edge of my eyelid so the bottom lid it'll curve around And making this perfect is hard, so take your time to just get a nice round circle. And then notice that um, my iris is covered by the eyelid near the top. I always kind of have to move my paper or look at it from a distance to make sure that it looks accurate. So take it away from you for a moment if you need to. And then from here, we're gonna draw the pupil. And your pupil needs to sit directly in the middle so um, of your iris. So, you know, adjust that as you need to. Pupil size um, obviously depends on how much light is hitting the eye. Um, you may, for your final draft, for your surreal eye, end up wanting to make the pupil really large or really small depending on if you're gonna be putting an object inside of it and what that object is. So. Um, think about that for your final draft, but right now, just kind of make it a normal average size so that we, that we have plenty of space to work on the shading of the pupil. And um, again, this is one of those harder parts, is like getting this to sit perfectly inside and not float too high or too low. So take a minute to do that. Okay, so I've got um, this part of my eye. Now I just need, again, to look in the mirror and look at my eyelid. So um, my eyelid specifically kind of goes up and um, kind of bends up here. Now everybody's eyelid is gonna be a little different. Um, and you know, obviously the older you get, the maybe you have more wrinkles in your eyelids. So, or even if you're young, you might have a double wrinkle in your lid. So make sure that you place all of that. Keep this sketch nice and light. So at this step, a lot of people would say, all right, it's time to start placing those eyelashes. But I believe that eyelashes, just like in this tutorial, should be placed very, very last because um, you know, you're doing all this shading inside the eye, so you wanna have those as the very last step. Um, so right now, we've drawn the outline. Um, we, can, we can go ahead and pencil in the eyebrow shape right now too and then we will start to do our shading. So for eyebrow shape, find your brow shape by looking in the mirror. And we are just so lightly 
penciling that in. And the reason why it's super light is we never want this to end up looking like an outline later because we're just gonna be actually drawing those hair follicles in just like we did on our um, pen and ink animal with their fur. So this will be the placement of my eyebrow, um, making sure that it is far enough off of the actual eyelid. So it's time to start shading the inside of the eye. And if you guys look at the sample, you'll notice that there's actually a lot of value inside this eye because the white of your eye isn't really white unless it's like this part because you have all these, like your eyelashes cast a shadow on the eye. So looking in the mirror, you're gonna notice that, oh gosh, maybe like a level five value is near the edges and then it goes to a level one inside your eye. So what I would do is take a pencil that's not overly dark, like your HB pencil, and you'll notice that I've kind of created a darker edge and then a quick gradient that goes from dark, level five dark, not like level nine dark, to, um, light and I'm gonna switch when I get into my really light areas I'll switch pencils but right now I'm just like I said kind of going getting a level 5 value all the way through I'm going all the way through the iris because there's gonna be a shadow there too so we don't want to forget about it And maybe for just a little more of a dramatic effect, I could go in with my 2B pencil in a little bit, but um, you might as well not overdo it. Just kind of keep things subtle. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom, but that shadow's not gonna go down quite as far. So again, I've given myself a nice kind of dark edge. which looks like an outline, but it's not gonna end up being an outline because I'm lightly pulling that value up. And I'll go ahead and zoom in. So you can see it. Okay, so you can see my shading, it's fairly clean, but it's not perfect. Um, now, you can take as much time as you need to make your shading as clean as possible. You want your shading to be as neat as possible because, like I've been saying, you can't like have bad shading and then expect your blending tool to fix it. Instead, um, Uh, just do as much as you possibly can with your pencil and then now a lot of people are gonna jump to their tortillion do not do that the reason why is this is a really large area and if you use your tortillion in it it's gonna leave you with really weird blotches and streaks so instead take the toilet paper wrap it around your finger and we're just gonna kind of see what we can pull down very gently so I'm going from that level five to a level one in a very smooth manner. It's just, it's not overwhelming. 
If I had used my 2B pencil, it probably would have ended up being too dark, but because I used my HB, it's, it's coming out really nice. And any areas that you end up being left with too fast of changes, stop, like right here, it, it just didn't blend that well. I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna really lightly shade with that HB pencil, or maybe even my 2H, and just touch that up. so that it looks nice and smooth. I'll give you a minute to do that. So I think I want this area right here to be a little bit more dramatic because I feel like I have a little bit more of a shadow area in there. So I'm gonna take my 2B pencil, and I'm not gonna push very hard, but I am gonna add just a little more value. So I'm taking it from, it kind of lightened to like a level four when I started blending it. So I'm taking it from a level four value to like a level six. So just to kind of give you those examples, I'm going from here to about here, just to get things a little bit darker. And this thing right here definitely has some value. This little piece of skin where your tear duct starts. Then, go ahead and start to value, uh, add value to the outside edges of this tear duct like this. So you're kind of shading in a circle. And I'm gonna switch my pencil here in a second back to my HB so I'm not too crazy and too dark. just added this little piece of skin and I don't like that I'm gonna take that out all right so I have a little value established so I could use my tortillion but I do want to introduce you guys to a q-tip so the q-tip functions a lot like a tortillion but um, it's always clean if you grab a new one and it doesn't leave as many streaks so I would just use that and then um, if you want like one of those really really bright highlights where maybe because it's you know if you think about your tear duct it's watery so where the light maybe hits that wet area take your kneaded eraser and then just pick out a little highlight um, you can go back in create value in the areas that need it And just remember, drawing isn't about drawing, shading, and being done. It's about drawing, shading, blending, or erasing, adding more value until it looks correct. So right now, um, I think this is probably a great place to finish um, that white part of the eye. And we're going to move on to shading your iris, which is... Um, a doozy of a process. So we'll get started in that on that in a minute. After I darken this area right there. So for the iris, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see all that goes into it. You can see that I have basically a bunch of hatching that's been developed in layers so that it looks like it's, you know, got this textural quality to it and there's no blending at all. Um, so that's the method that we're going to use for this. It's pretty time consuming, so I just want to give you a heads up. The first step that you want to do is find the very center of your pupil. And then what we're going to do is divide the pupil into like a pizza shape. So I'll show you what I mean. 
And from here, I'm basically just gonna draw lines that intersect through the center. And the reason why is if your lines don't go directly to the center, if they like maybe go like that way, um, it looks totally wrong. So if you have these guidelines, it just helps make sure that all of your lines are going in the right direction and um, you're doing the right thing. So once you've got that divided out into some pizza slices, um, start by taking your 2H pencil. You do want to make sure all your pencils are very sharp for this so that you do get that nice, um, you know, like I said, that textural feeling. Your lines are crisp and clean. Um, and then what you're doing is you're just kind of taking like a flick. You're just taking your pencil and flicking it inward from both sides. And um, every eye, again, is gonna be a little bit different. So if you have dark eyes, um, you're gonna probably do even more layers. Whereas if you have lighter eyes, you might make these lines um, a little further apart and you may not even connect right down the center here because um, maybe you wanna leave that lighter. Um, I have kind of dark blue eyes, so I'll fill that center in just a tiny bit. Um, again, the end result is gonna be like that where it's pretty light and darker on those outer edges. So work your way around your eye using this technique. And I would rather have you master this technique really, really good in just a couple of sections of the iris, like, you know, two pizza slices, rather than do the entire thing. But if you're working faster than me, then feel free to continue all the way around. But I just want you to get this technique down, because this is the hardest part of the eye, is um, making sure that your little lines are kind of wispy and um, not too bulky. A lot of people go like this. Let me show you what not to do. So a lot of people will be like, and see how hard and rough those lines look? You don't want them to look like that. This is bad. Okay, so now that I've done this with my lightest pencil, my 2H, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do it with my next darker pencil. So it's gonna be my HB, and again, I make sure my pencil's really sharp, and I'm just gonna work my way in. And this is gonna end up, the, the pupil's gonna end up black. So this edge I can be a little bit sloppy with. I'm not gonna worry about making sure I meet the edge perfectly. So see how I'm kind of messing up right there. Um, that's totally fine. Get sloppy with your inside edge. It's the outside edge that you really have to work hard at making it clean and neat. So, I got the inside. So now I'm gonna work on the outside. And I'm gonna just kind of give myself a little bit of an outline that I work with and pull it in. Again, outlines are illegal as always, but I just need um, a little more weight on this line so that I don't make a mistake. So I'm kind of shading it in. And most people do have an, a darker outer edge around their eye anyway, around their iris anyway. Now, if you've got like dark brown eyes, I would probably skip the HB pencil and go straight to a 2B. And you can see that now this layer of lines that I'm doing with my HB is just a little bit shorter. They're not meeting totally in the center. And um, they are a little bit further apart than before. So um, this is the moment where if you have darker eyes, um, I would skip straight to a very sharp 6B pencil. If you um, have lighter eyes, you could stop right here. If your eyes are super light, you could you could stop right here and maybe add a little bit more, um, you know, like around that perimeter area. But 
Um, as I said earlier, I've got darker blue eyes, so I'm gonna just go in and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see really carefully how, sorry about that, how I space my lines. They're a little bit shorter than the rest. Maybe I'll throw in a few long ones just kind of for texture and emphasis to change things up a bit. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing on the outside, but maybe make it even darker because typically that outside edge of your eye is darker. And I'm sorry, I know that I already said all this. I'm a broken record. I'll be quiet now. For two seconds. Okay, now, uh, again, watch out for outlines. So if you're getting any outlines, kind of fill that area in. You can see some of my little shading there was a little bit choppy. Okay, so zooming in to the iris, um, if you guys need to make any adjustments, take time to do that. Like I said, I want you to get just like a couple sections down really, really well. Um, and if you're if you're done with that and you want to move on to another section, go for it. Um, but it's all about the pencil stroke. And then if you need to kind of create a little bit of a highlight um, in this area, you can always take your kneaded eraser and just pick it out right right in here and that'll just kind of lighten up this um, area that should be lighter um, so we're gonna move on to the pupil so this is gonna be pure black and this is the part where it would be a very good idea for you guys to have scratch paper underneath your hand so that you don't start smudging all the beautiful shading that you've done so grab a piece of scratch paper put it under your hand and um, of course you're going to take your darkest pencil because we want the pupil to be pure black and um, you're just going to go ahead and shade this in make sure your edges are clean you can start with an outline because you're just going to fill this entire thing in black um, on your final draft you may end up putting something interesting inside your pupil oops i just messed up um, so you, maybe you don't want to shade the whole thing black, but for this practice, go ahead and just fill it in. So I'm finished shading the entire pupil. Um, again, you want it to be shiny black, streak free. Um, when it hits the light, you might see streaks, but ultimately it's totally shaded in. Um, next we're going to move on to the eyelid. And if you guys look at these, um, these are really great references for, um, they're just the way that the shadows hit the eye. You can of course look in the mirror too. But I think I'm gonna be looking at um, these right here just to kind of see the way that the shadows hit. So we're gonna shade this whole outside area before we get into the rest. Um, so I'm taking my HB pencil and I'm just gonna give myself a nice starting point of, um, let's look at our value scale. I think we're gonna go from like maybe an eight or a seven and then we're gonna work our way down to like a three because um, we really need a range of gray tones. So I changed my mind. I'm gonna start with a 2B pencil just to get a little darker. Um, a lot of people get really scared of adding dark shadows um, but that's what makes um, a drawing look realistic. So don't forget your scratch paper under your hand so you don't smear. And I'm starting with this dark edge and then I'm gonna do a fast gradient downward. So as soon as you feel like, oh, it's getting too dark, just switch pencils. But remember, this 2B pencil is gonna like blend further than your others so um, it, it, you might want to use it more because it kind of moves a little bit more if you take the tissue and pull it down.
All right, so you can see that I'm already getting lighter. I'm using my pencil at a pretty strong angle so I can cover a lot of ground with the side of my graphite. And now I'm gonna switch to my HB um, so that I can make this gradient just continue to get lighter. Um, guys, I just wanna remind you, keep your pencil sharp. And as you work your way down, you wanna make sure that um, this, this part is quite a bit darker than the part that's gonna, the part of the lid that's gonna hit the eyelashes. And if you wear eyeshadow, this is where your um, eyes might be even darker. If you wear eyeliner, you may add the line down right here. But right now we're just doing the eyelid. Um, again, we're shading this right here. If you're dying to start blending, you totally can. Um, this is a pretty big area, so you can use your tissue but you have to be really cautious that you're not getting it into the areas of the eye. So if you're not very um, delicate with this, I would recommend using um, either your Tortillion or the, the Q-tip, but notice that because I used the tissue really delicately, I was able to just smooth that out really easy. There's no streaks or bumps. Um, Let's see, if I use the uh, Q-tip, I just can't cover nearly as much area. So it kind of just isolates me into smaller areas. Same with the Tortillion. So just um, the best advice I can give you is be very, very careful about um, being specific about where your blending tools hit. And um, I would recommend going back into the upper edge of your eye now, just to recreate that dark shadow without making an outline. Recreate the dark shadow that's gonna be um, cast from your eyelid and lashes onto the white of the eye, now that we're done with that area. So I have a 2B pencil, not a 6B, because um, I don't want it to be too dramatic. But I do want a nice, crisp, clean line. And um, so to do the upper lid, you're basically gonna do the exact same shading. I would just reference these to see um, what value, or look in the mirror. Um, one area I don't want you guys to forget about is gonna be uh, right down here, um, below the eye. So everybody, everybody look in the mirror. And notice that you really do have a pretty strong shadow down here. Um, I'm using my, my 2B pencil, but very lightly on the side of it. And I'm just able to get a really nice shadow down here because this is an indent that captures darkness. And a lot of people have um, very dark under eyes. So don't be scared to add the darkness here because if you don't, your eye's gonna look flat. Just layer it on as needed. And bring it right to the eyelid edge. And on this eyelid edge, this is where you might have um, kind of a stronger line, I guess you would say, or a darker edge. So feel free to push harder right on the edge of that eyelid. Notice that as um, I'm pushing harder, I change the way I hold my pencil. So I go from that bear paw grip to um, the tripod, meaning I'm holding it like this. In um, these more specific dark areas. And then now I'm gonna flip my pencil and hold it in the bear paw grip. capture some shadows. Maybe this I would say, 
you kind of want to get this as dark as like a like like you did up here kind of like a level a seven ish and then we'll just pull it down in a way So I just took my tissue and I shaded, I blended all the shading I did. Um, I stayed away from that, that edge that's right next to the eyelid. Um, and what I'm going to do on that edge is I'm going to take a, it doesn't have to be a totally clean tortillion because um, there's quite a bit of value here, but I'm going to take my tortillion on the edge and do, um, use that next to the edge so that, um, I can blend near this without smudging and smearing it with my finger. Because one more time, the tortillions are great for small areas and the tissue is great for larger areas. So, um, after you've blended this, this rim of the eye here does need a little bit of value. It's not going to be too dark, but a little. So um, I'm going to test my tortillion on my scratch paper to make sure it's not too dark. Oh yeah, it's not too dark. And I'm just going to use that to just give this a little dusting of value. And if that doesn't do enough, um, you know, you can always shade. with your pencil. All right. So now that I've done all this blending, I do need to go back in and darken some areas um, just to make it to make it really pop and get that full range of value for the three-dimensional quality. So I'm going to go in with my 2B pencil and I'm going to really darken this bottom edge. And if you look at your eye or at any of these sample photos, you will see that um, the more photorealistic of these, I mean, this one's really dramatic, almost too dramatic, but right here, that's pure black right down in there. So um, we're really trying to capture some of that value so that our eye sets, the eyeball sets back into the lid. and looks three-dimensional. Um, if you do great shading, you won't need to blend it. Um, otherwise, if you do plan on blending this, I would definitely use the Q-tip or Tortillion because you're in this small line area. Um, whatever you do, make it so that it doesn't look like a line, that it looks like a nice, dark, clean edge with a gradient next to it. And um, I'm also gonna just darken right in here because that's also a nice area with deep dark shadows and um, by now you guys should feel really comfortable with all your blending tools and when to appropriately use them or use this as a chance to experiment and, and find out. Um, after you guys have shaded um, this outer edge of your eye, so I do want you to shade this whole outer edge of the eye, we're gonna go through and do eyelashes very last and we will also do eyebrows last. So I just took a few minutes to shade the entire um, upper eyelid area. I even shaded right through where the eyebrow is gonna go. Um, and the reason why is if you go to add like stray hairs, you wanna make sure that there's still skin tone underneath it, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, to shade this, all I used was my 2B pencil on its side and then just blended it with a tissue and um, it did a pretty good job. I, I did it pretty fast so it's not totally streak free, but <clears throat> for the time I spent and the outcome, it's it's not bad. 
Um, ultimately, you want your final draft to be a little smoother than this. Um, but you can see I added just a little bit of an extra um, shadow right here above the tear duct area. And then um, right here would be where the eyebrow goes, and I did a little shading. So I'm not going to do eyebrows today, but I do want to show you that since I have the skin tone shaded, now if I've got like some of those crazy eyebrows that stand alone, they're going to be fine because they have that flesh color underneath it versus pure white. So you always want to go in and shade underneath the brows before you um, actually fill them in with the hair. And we're not going to do that, so um, what I do want to show you guys is how to do the eyelashes. Um, this is the definitely the hardest part of um, drawing an eye. You'll notice that everybody draws them slightly different and that male lashes look 100% different than female lashes. So male lashes I actually think are a lot harder. They kind of fall down into the eye well, while female lashes or lashes with mascara might curl up. Um, and with that being said, boys still do have lashes that curl up. Um, so gentlemen, if you wanna draw lashes that curl up, that's totally fine. I don't blame you because they're really hard to do. So I have quite a few previous student samples of eyelashes and um, you can see that many of them made a few mistakes. Um, this person, their eyelashes go way too close to the tear ducts. Um, so be careful of that. They also did too many lashes. Um, this person, it looks like they made these like miniature triangular spikes and then like trimmed their lashes so that they all end at the same place. Um, oh, no lashes on that one. Oh, same. It just looks like it looks like somebody chopped their lashes off. So um, doing lashes correctly is very important and um, very challenging. Wow, this one did way too many lashes. So let's dive into this. Um, the first thing I am gonna recommend to you guys is to find a page in your packet that you can practice on. And I also want you, actually this is a perfect page for you to practice on. I want you guys to uh, take a look at this. So remember, we don't want our strokes to be like that. We really want that kind of flick where it starts from thick and goes to a point. That's called tapering. Um, so you want to taper them from thick to thin. You also want to make sure that your lashes kind of, you know, go at an angle. Now our eye is going, all of our lashes are going to go at this angle. So everybody just test that out. Um, I would say an HB or a 2B pencil is a a great pencil to practice with. Make sure that it's nice and sharp, so if it's not, go sharpen it. And just to get that shape and feeling down. And um, once you're ready to get started, do this with me. Protect your drawing from any smudges with your scratch paper. Then, here's what I recommend doing. Do way fewer lashes than you need. Like, maybe like, a quarter of the lashes that you need because you can always add more. One of the mistakes that I make the most is I just do way too many lashes. So your lashes are going to come right out of this lid. So what I would probably recommend doing is just starting down at this bottom point and give yourself your first lash. Um, then go like, you know, a half inch and do another lash. Again, I know this is not enough but this is just your starting point to get the direction, maybe the length, you can always add on to the length, down, and then we're gonna fill in from here. So right around here, our lashes start to change directions. They go from that way to going that way. So here, I'm gonna show you that right here. See how they go straight up and then they start to curve to the left? So your lashes will curve. Um, if you don't have such curled lashes, yours are gonna um, kind of fall down a little bit more. So reference the samples. So right about here, my lashes go straight up and then they start to curve to the left. And you wanna stay away from your tear duct. Your lashes are gonna end around right there. <clears throat> you don't want hair in your tear duct. That would look very bizarre. So this will be about the last lash. 
Um, so this is just a really good starting point. You can do the exact same thing on the bottom, but your lashes aren't gonna come out here. They're gonna come right out from here on the lid. So um, here, let me show you our sample again. The lashes come out from right there. And they're not quite as long on the bottom. They're curving down. They are also gonna change directions in almost the same location. So we'll go right there. And that's, again, a good starting point. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 2B pencil because um, I think that I'll be able to get a, a much stronger value um, with this and you wanna make it nice and sharp. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna darken the root of those lashes that I did and I'm gonna fill in another row. And I wanna make it so that they're not all the same length. Maybe some of my lashes kind of like clump together and crisscross or make go both directions because lashes aren't perfect maybe they'll make like an Eiffel Tower shape so play around with that and I sometimes I even go in and I'll really really darken I'll spend some time darkening those roots which is nice but I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm still just on my second layer and then we'll do one final layer and again make them random random lengths crisscross we want our lashes to be perfect but the reality is they are not maybe one goes way over like that learn to make mistakes and don't hate yourself if you do this wrong I've drawn too many eyes to count and I think I have messed up lashes more times than I haven't so don't feel bad so now I'm kind of going back in and I am darkening those roots and I'm doing lashes that would say like have mascara on them so they're a little darker and um, more dense at the roots if you are doing a lash without mascara you wouldn't darken the roots quite so much but reference these samples in front of you because they will be a really great resource remember less is more don't overdo it keep that pencil sharp you might need to go back in and just redefine this dark edge here too The interesting thing is in every single one of these samples um, in your packet, every artist does their lashes differently, so I'm definitely not going to tell you that the way that I'm doing them is 100% perfect, but this is just, over the years, a method that <clears throat> I've found that to make them look natural and not overdone. And as you get closer to your tear ducts, you do want them to be more thin, um, shorter, and just not as many, not as dark either.
Now I'm just going to go in and kind of do the same thing to the bottom lashes. Um, I'll pause the video and come back, but just keep referencing your samples or look in the mirror. On the bottom, your lashes may take like a harder curve down, so they kind of like hook down. So just really emphasize that, that nice bend and curve. And that's going to be where I stop this sample and we will work on eyebrows another day.